Alrighty, alrighty. I hope again that you guys actually use these recording skills. Can you close your laptops, please? Donate them. You can just pay attention, even if you don't have your booklet with you. You can watch all the way. Thank you, thank you. Alrighty. I know it sucks, but it's all right. It's all right. This is not a hard one. This is something that most of you have probably already done at some point in your previous schools. Okay, but today's session. We're looking at, again, review of graphs, but we're looking at, this time, measures of center. Okay, measure of center, meaning something to do with the middle or data where it sort of summarizes everything and you can use a single number to represent the average, which you probably all know what that means, starting with the word M, and it's when you're not nice to somebody. The mean, okay? But that's not what it's referring to. But... What I'm hoping that you can do today is to be able to identify the mean and the median and also the mode, it's not here, but mean, median, and then describe how skewed a graph is. Whether it, There's three options with that, whether it's positive, negative, or approximately symmetrical. But those are the three things So we need to do. Mean, median, mode, and then the skewness. Well, that's four things. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, quick recap. Yeah, A measure of center is basically a stable number represents the whole data. But what that number is, is you kind of think of it as where is it in the middle? Okay, the average. And there's a couple ways of finding the measure of center. There's three ways you can do it. The first one is mean. Everybody knows this. The mean is when you add everything together. And then you divide up by the number of values. So that's what that formula is saying here. You add everything. So the sum of all your values. And then you divide it by the number of values that you have. Okay, so that's the mean. We'll practice that shortly. Median, we've sort of already done a little bit of it, but the median is the middle number in a number of values. So, but the only thing you've got to do with the median is you have to make sure that the numbers are from lowest to highest. I've seen kids do this before, and I've seen it in year 11, yeah? This is the data set. 0, 2, 1, 5, 6, 3, 4. And they're like... Oh, yeah, Mr. The Median 5 third. I'm like, no, that's not right. Okay. It needs to be in numerical order when you do median. Okay. So please do not look at a data set that's not been ordered yet and say, yep, the median is the middle, which is right there. Okay. Not correct. Um, and uh, so you put it in numerical order first. Um, also, we'll talk about what it means if you have a number that, for example, you have zero. One, two, uh, three, five, and then what's that? One, two, three, four, and then maybe seven. If your median falls in between two numbers, two and three, how do you find the middle number there? Yeah, so what you've got to do is add them together. Okay, so two plus three is five, and then divide it by two, which equals 2.5. So that means the median is right there in the middle, 2.5, between two and three. If your median was, let's get rid of all this. Let's say your median was between 57 and 60. Okay, what's the median between them? Well, let's add them together. So 57 plus 60 equals, oh, well, 117. But what you can do is use your calculator to, uh, to find the mean. A median, sorry, 60. And then you've got to divide them by two, yeah? which equals 58.5. So that means the median there okay, is 58.5. All right, so just keep that in mind. Remember as well with the median, if you have heaps of numbers, it's uh, you don't want to be going um, and trying to find the number manually by going one, like cancelling a number on each end each time. Just use this formula. So this rule gives you the location. All right, so this rule is the location of the mean. Sorry for the bad writing. But the location of the mean, where it is in the number line. Okay, the mode, I'll just speak over the music, is the most frequent number. The one that appears the most often. Oh, I'll leave that there. Alright, we'll skip this. But let's do examples of the mean and the mode. So the mean here. Let's calculate that. So for this data set, all you're doing... I might do this actually. 
is you're going to add all of this. Let's see if I can uh, do this here. So actually, if you got it on your notes, just copy along. But all you're doing is you're going to add all of this. Yeah, 9 plus 9 plus 10 plus all that. So slow this now. Okay, add them all up. And then what are you guys going to do? Divide it by the number of numbers. Thank you for telling me. Appreciate it. Guys, you guys are so dead today. I see. All you're doing is you're adding them all up. So 9 plus 9 plus 10 plus 18, 18, 18, 19 plus 20 plus 25, 27, 27, 33, 35, 37, and then 40. Add them all up, yeah? So when you do that, I'm going to do that here. Yeah. So nine plus nine plus ten plus eighteen. And this is where I've noticed in year eleven a lot of people oops, a lot of people will actually um, get this wrong because and like what I'm doing now, you might miss a number. Okay, so you've got to be really mindful of what you're putting in there. Otherwise, again, you might miss some number and then it throws off all of your scores. All the way up to nineteen. Oops. Plus 20, plus 25. Get, it does get a bit tedious. 27, 27, 33. What did you say, Colin? And then 40. So add them all up. Okay, 345. Okay, so that's your answer. Now, that's not quite the mean just yet because there's one more step. Afterwards, we need to then divide it by how many numbers there are. How many numbers are there, Joy? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Divided by fifteen. And this will equal uh, fifteen. Twenty-three. Okay, so that means the mean is twenty-three. Now, this is what I hate the most. This is what kids do. On their calculator, right? Please do not do this. Uh, let's see if I can get it back. Oh no, I can't. No, it won't work. Okay. This is what you guys do. So you guys go 9 plus 9. I'm not going to do all of them. Plus 10, plus 18, plus 18, plus 18, and then plus 19, and plus 20. Let's say I put all my numbers in. And then what you guys do in the end is you go divided by 15. Why is this wrong? Exactly. It's it's referring to 20 divided by 15. So what are you going to say, uh, Kira? Yeah. Don't do that. Press enter first, and then you divide it by. Okay, do the divide in the end after you press enter. Please don't forget that. Okay, I don't know why you guys make that mistake so often, but anyway. Yeah, but that's it. Okay, mode, nice and easy. The mode is the number that appears the most frequently. Anyone want to tell me which one that is here? Which one appears the most? 18. So, because it appears three times. Easy. Not hard. All right. Next one is the measures of center for your median. Now, the median is um, the middle numbers, yeah, the middle number in your data set. So I think this was the same as the one before. So we counted that there was 15 values. So if you want to find the median here, use that formula. I show the median location of median. Good, good, very nice. Okay. So remember the rule n plus 1 divided by 2, where n is the number of numbers. So this becomes 15 plus 1 divided by 2. If we did that, 16 divided by 2, which is 8. So that means the eighth number is the median. So if you count here... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's your median. Don't tell me that the median is eight. Yeah, the median is um, the eighth number, which is the number 20 in this case. Okay, any questions? So if I copy it down, give me one second. Uh, Today we finish at no. 
this session. I can't remember. All right, what is that sound? Stop that, please. All right, let's keep going. We don't finish. Well, we start at 11.20, so we still have, we've only gone through 25 minutes. So another 12.25 would be 11, uh, 12 o'clock. It's 12 o'clock. All right, give me a second. Yes, maybe. All right, let's go to the next one. So sorry, guys. Um, the For the following data now, instead of having only... Uh, so what we did here is you're calculating the median for um, data that has odd numbers, uh, an odd number of numbers. Remember, we've got 15 bits of data here. But now, in the next uh, piece of data, we've got a 16th number. So let's use our formula N plus 1 divided by 2. This time, we've got 16 numbers, so 16 plus 1 divided by 2 equals 17 over 2, which equals 8.5. So that means the 8.5th number is the median. What this tells you is that the median is going to be two between two numbers. So if we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8.5, so right there between 20 and 25 is where your median is. But now we need to calculate that. Okay, so we're going to add the numbers 20 and 25. So if we just do that, 20 plus 25 will equal 50, uh, 45, sorry, divided by 2, and that will give you the median. Okay, and oops. <coughs> Uh, 22.5. So that's the median. Okay. See how it's different? If you had a odd amount of numbers, the median was 20. Here, because of the, um, un, uh, the even, uh, uneven amount and there's an extra number, it's moved the location of where the middle number is, which in this case is 22.5. And I think that'll be it after this one. Okay. So I'll leave that there. Yes, oh, there you are, your hand up. Sorry, copy it down, please. All right, shall we keep going? We're nearly done. Last few things is just talking about measures of center with describing the shape of the graph. Okay, next one, next one, let's keep going. So now we're going to talk about the shapes of your graphs. Yeah, the shapes. Makiana, make sure you copy this. Yeah? All right, shapes. So when it comes to shapes, you're only really looking at three different types. Yeah. Oh, we want you to be able to describe three different types. And the shapes basically talk about how the data is made up. Is there more data on the lower end or is there more data on the higher end or is the data sort of even in the middle? Okay, or in the middle of the overall data. So when we say something is symmetrical, you can kind of see that if you drew an imaginary mountain there, okay, it looks like a mountain where you've got a peak in the middle. Okay, that's what we talk about when it's symmetrical. Data... Okay, or the median or the mean is probably somewhere in the middle of the data there. Okay, it's symmetrical. It's got about the same amount on the left and the same on the right. Okay, about, not, not exactly, but it's symmetrical. When we say data is positively skewed, what we're saying is a lot of your data is on the lower end and then it trails off towards the higher side. So you can think of it as it's big at the start and then it decreases as you go. That's what we talk about with positively skewed. Big at the start, trails in the end. Okay? So the mountain or the peak is at the beginning. Whereas with negatively skewed, it starts low 
and then it sort of goes up towards the higher end. So that means with the data for negatively squeezed, it's low at the start and then it goes up towards the end. Okay, because when you talk about data being skewed, skewed means it's either on one side or the other. So when we say positively skewed, it's more on the left. When we say negatively skewed, it's more on the right. Okay, and you can always refer back to these when you're working with data. Uh, the other thing as well, and I'll get you to draw this in your notes, and I think it might be there, is when you work with a box plot, okay, and draw these box plots. We haven't done box plots just yet. But you can draw box plots here to represent how they might look like. So, for example, for this box plot, you can see that it's symmetrical because the box is more or less in, this, in the middle. When we say that uh, a box plot is positively skewed, you're saying that the box is a little bit more towards the left. Okay, And then when you say that a box plot is more towards the right, which is negatively skewed, or when you say it's negatively skewed, it's more to the right, like that. So just keep that in mind when we're talking about shape. You're going to come back to this at some point, so please don't forget. Have you guys done box plots before? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes and no, depending on your school. Again, we use the same principle for the shape of box plots, yeah? All right, let's describe the shape of these graphs here. Okay, so if I look at the frequency of the scores, I can see a lot of them are in the higher end of the data. So if you try and draw a mountain, correct, it would be negatively skewed. So this is negatively skewed. Okay. What about uh, the first dot plot? Yeah, I would argue that it is kind of symmetrical. Some people would say approximately symmetrical because it's not exactly symmetrical, and that's also correct. And what about that box plot there? Positively, good. I would say positively as well, only because of the, what do we call this little X here? It starts with O. Not quite. Outlier. So it's an outlier. An outlier means it doesn't quite belong with the data. So this is probably a positively skewed Bad spelling. Okay, what about the stem and leaf plot? So for that one, you may need to turn your head to the side. Good. I would argue, yes. So it's, it starts high, then it goes down. So it's probably positively skewed. Okay, that second dot plot looks pretty positive to me. So again, if you're confused, just draw the mountain. And you can, again, refer back to these shapes here. This will help you figure out what skew you're working with. Um, the second box plot, ooh, I think it's more negative. It kind of starts low, and then you can kind of see that a lot of it is probably somewhere towards the higher end. And uh, now the median doesn't necessarily mean where the peak is, but it does skew more to the right. So arguably, I would say that this is negatively skewed. Although, um, there are some questions, Colin, where it gets a bit confusing because of where how the data is sort of laid out. The last one's quite obvious. What is it? Good. Turn your head to the side. Remember, negative starts low, goes high. Positive starts high, then it goes down. Okay, negatively skewed. Uh, so again, draw the mountains if you want on these. It does help. All right, last thing, and then we're basically done. So now we've got to figure out uh, which measure of center is the best, okay, depending on what kind of data you are using. So you can see here that mean, median, and mode are actually all good, but some are better than others, depending on what your data looks like. Okay, and what you're looking at is basically the type and the shape. So when it comes to categorical data, the mode is the most useful one. Okay, predominantly because it's descriptive. So you're looking at the ones that appear the most. You can't really use mean or median in categorical data. Why is that, guys? Well, I can't use mean or median. 
It's not really numbers. It's descriptive, yeah? So that's when it comes to numerical data. That's when the mean or median is good. You can also say the mode, but it's not the best. So the best use for categorical data is the mode. But the best use for numerical is going to be mean or median. Now, the other thing you're looking at is the shape. Okay. Now, you don't, when it comes to shape, it's only numerical data that has shape. Yeah. Categorical data doesn't have shape. So we're just lo looking at data like this when it comes to the shape. So when it comes to shape, if your data is symmetrical, so I'll draw it for you. If it's symmetrical, remember it has to look like a mountain, then use the mean. Okay, the mean is the best. So if it looks symmetrical, use the mean. If it's positively skewed, so if your data looks like it's positively skewed, it starts high, then it goes low, then use the median. Same if it's negatively skewed. Okay, so it starts low, then goes high. So whenever your data is either more in the low or more in the high, then you use the median. But if your data looks pretty even, then you have to use the mean. That's the easiest way to think about it. So if it's, again, I'll repeat it. If data is skewed, median. If data is symmetrical, use the mean. It's, it's that simple. Any questions? Any questions? All right. Let's do these real quick and then we'll smash out some work. So that first one here. I can say that the data looks uh, negatively skewed. So which one should I use? Median. Median. Good. And again, because it's negatively skewed. First one, uh, the first dot plot. Mean. Yeah, it looks like it's approximately symmetrical. So yeah, mean. going to write approx sim which means approximately symmetrical the box plot here which uh what direction is, where, where does it lie mostly on the lower side or the higher side lower yeah thank you for answering my question myself lower. thank you and then it sort of trails off towards the end so what does that mean what skew is it it's median because it's positively skewed Thank you. Median for the last one because it's negatively skewed. So it sort of peaks up there. Again, so lastly, uh, uh, lastly before I finish up, mean, uh, use the mean if it's... Um, use the mean, sorry, if the data is uh, approximately symmetrical. And then use the median if your data is skewed either positive or negative. That's the easiest way to think about it. All right, any questions? No questions. Any comments? Anything you want to add? Okay, so lastly, before I let you guys off and start working, measures of center, you have mean, median, mode. Mean, add everything up, then divide it by the number of numbers. Median, okay, you're just finding the middle, but you got to make sure the numbers are in order, lowest to highest. Just be mindful if you have a median of whether it's uh, an odd number of numbers or even number of numbers. And then mode's the most frequent. And then for the shape of your graphs, you've got three. Symmetrical, positive or negative. Make sure you include skewed in there. And then measures of center. Which one is the most ideal? For categorical data, use the mode. Easiest one. But for numerical data, it depends on the shape. If your data is skewed, use the median. If your data is symmetrical, use the mean. Cool. Summary, summary. Done, done, done. Yes, Alana. What if you've done all the questions? What if you've done them all? Let me just stop the recording. <laughs>